Welcome to InfoCenter's video series. In this video, we're going to give you an overview of Hardware Asset Management, or HAM for short, highlighting the key differences between what is available out of the box and HAM Professional. We're also going to be sharing some pro tips along the way. Just a quick note about us, InfoCenter is the leading and fastest growing global ServiceNow Elite Partner. Stay tuned to learn more about how InfoCenter can help your company maximize its ServiceNow investment. Now let's go ahead and dive in and learn more about Hardware Asset Management. To help guide our discussion and make the best use of our time, we're going to structure our walkthrough to address three common questions we receive from our clients. Number one is, what are the major differences between out-of-the-box ITSM HAM and then HAM Professional? Number two, what are the key features and functions we should really take a close look at when evaluating HAM Pro? And how could those new features bring even more value to our enterprise? And then number three, what is the lift like to implement HAM Pro? Is there a recommended standard like migrating from out of the box HAM first, or is it easier to start with HAM Pro from scratch? Well, these are great questions, and we're going to tackle each one of them along with a brief demo. So let's go ahead and begin. Before we dive into the platform, let's start with a quick pro tip, and that is always confirm our project goals and understand how we're going to meet those goals before we start the project. Now our goal for hardware asset management is really simple. It's answering what I call the four key questions. What do I have? Where is it? How much is it costing? And then how well are my assets performing? If we can answer each one of these questions with evidence, we know we've met our objective. Let's address the first question, and that is, what are the major differences between out-of-the-box HAM and HAM Pro? Let's do that by comparing features. We'll start by looking at out-of-the-box HAM. As you can see from the screen, there are several modules that are involved. We have asset, inventory, contract, product catalog, and then procurement. Just a quick note on the procurement module. This is not installed out of the box, but it is a free plugin. So you're going to want to go ahead and install that to support your implementation. Let's review some quick functions. We click on the asset module and we go to portfolios. We can see a list of all our hardware assets. In other words, assets that are uniquely trackable, things like desktops and servers versus our consumables. These are items that are typically tracked in bulk like cables, toner, printer cartridges, things of that nature. If we go to the inventory module, we can see under the stock submenu, all the assets that are in the status of in stock and where they're at. We can see a list of all of our stock rooms our stockroom types, and then also what we call stocking rules. These are used to drive business rules to help us manage our minimum, maximum quantities of inventory we want to maintain within our internal stock rooms. We also have the ability to create what are called transfer orders. This gives us visibility into transferring stock from one stock location to another through an organized and a methodical process, very important part of maintaining our inventory. We scroll down to contract, we can see a list of all the contract types. Most notable for our purposes are warranties and then what we call maintenance contracts. This is where we'd actually see all of our hardware maintenance contracts with our vendors. If we open up an example, we can see the relationship between the contract itself and the assets that are covered. And then from here, alerts, dashboards, and reports can be created to help us manage the contract lifecycle. We also have what's called the product catalog, and underneath that you've got what are called product models. These are your form factors. If we click on hardware models as a list, we can see things like a MacBook 15-inch Pro. This is the representation of what this item is within our inventory, and this is the header record for all of our assets. We can see some common information such as vendor, make, model, and then other attributes that are important in managing the life cycle of the asset. Lastly, we've got the procurement module where we can see the procurement requests versus the actual purchase orders. And then also we have visibility into what we call receiving slips. The tail end of the procurement process is to do a final receipt on assets. And we can actually see what assets were received against which PO and to what location. Very important part of our tracking and auditing process. So in summary, HAM Basic does support end-to-end -end asset management and comes with a number of small out-of-the-box workflows. It does allow you to manage contracts and link them to assets and then also manage the procurement cycle. If procurement is enabled, that facilitates a very nice back-end receiving process. It does not do things such as data normalization at the model level. 
In other words, there's no automatic way of rationalizing overlapping model records. That would have to be done manually. Then also there's not a lot of out of the box automations to support things like auditing, managing a loaner program, doing asset swaps during an incident, and then other full lifecycle turnkey activities. Each one of those are doable, but they'd have to be manually configured within the platform. So now that we've just summarized the basics of HAM Basic, let's go ahead and turn our attention to HAM Professional. As we look at HAM Professional, we're gonna see that it's much more robust and offers many new features that are enabled right out of the box. Let's review some of the key highlights. First is model normalization. This is supported by what's called Content Delivery Services, which is a very large library of standard makes and models that's managed and curated by the ServiceNow team. Let's go take a look at an example. If we open up a hardware record, we're gonna notice there's a brand new tab called Normalization. This allows the system to standardize the manufacturer, the product, and the model data based on what's being discovered or manually entered within the system. This happens automatically as part of the normalization process. In addition to that, we have what we call hardware model lifecycle records. This allows us to track the lifecycle events for a particular piece of hardware. For example, we can track if it's still generally available, if it's reaching end of life, end of support, and run the appropriate dashboards and reports against that. There's also an out-of-the-box asset audit module where I can create audit projects to audit things like stock rooms, and then be able to pull reports on the difference between the items that I expect within that location versus the items that are physically scanned. There's also a number of automated workflows and tasks that are available out of the box. Features such as having the ability to manage bulk stock orders, the ability to manage loaner devices in the system from request all the way through return, the ability to manage the disposal process via disposal order process, and also the ability to manage the return merchandise authorization process. We also have the ability, if we go to procurement, to import what are called the ASNs or advanced shipment notifications from the vendor. We get it in spreadsheet form, we drag and drop it onto this UI page, we process it, and the system creates assets in a status of awaiting delivery, saving time, and improving data quality. We also have a series of new requests that are available out of the box, supporting the RMA process, the hardware asset bulk refresh process, inventory restocking, and then also supporting the loaner asset request process. Underpinning all these new features and functions are a series of new dashboards and reports. The hardware asset dashboard displays metrics focusing on asset health, model management, procurement, inventory, and then end of life processes. The last feature we'll touch on in HAM Pro is how it's licensed. HAM Pro is licensed by asset class and the system gives you the ability to opt in or opt out by specific asset class as needed to conserve your subscription ratios. This is a good way of conserving licenses if needed. The second question before us is what are the key features and functions we should take a close look at during our evaluation of HAM Pro and how can those new features help us? While there are many time-saving features offered within HAM Pro that we could discuss, there are a critical few that we encourage you to consider during your evaluation. The first is model normalization. Automated normalization saves us a lot of time and saves us a lot of quality issues. As hardware admins and practitioners, we do spend a lot of time on data quality and accuracy, so this automation is really critical for us. Each time a new model record is created, the master data library is accessed and it checks for any searches based on manufacturer, product, and model. There's fuzzy searches in the background to check for typos, different cases, misspellings, close spellings, things of that nature. And it performs automatic reconciliation. In the cases where a match is not found for some reason, an admin does have the ability to manually normalize the model and that, that normalization is remembered from that point forward. So it becomes part of the standard library. All this together really saves us a lot of time over the life of a program. The second big feature to consider is the auditing module. Having a turnkey auditing process that works out of the box with the mobile app addresses a critical HAM function. This is a function that had to be configured manually in the past. 
This gives the asset auditors the ability to create one or more asset projects by location and gives them visibility into the difference between the expected assets in that location versus the ones that were found or scanned via the mobile app. These audit results are also posted back to the asset record for historical tracking purposes. The last feature we'll highlight that we think is critical to examine is what's called automated tasks. There are a number of these tasks that are available to save field staff lots of time, like the ability to do a quick swap during asset creation. A very quick example would be opening up an incident record, identifying the old CI or the old asset that needs to be replaced, in this case for a dead PC. If I scroll down to the affected assets tab, which is automatically populated, there are a couple of new columns that are available now. The first one's called asset action, and if I double click on it, I see that I've got a number of different actions, including update or repairing the asset in place, swapping it out for a different asset, or retiring this asset. There's a prescribed set of workflows that fire based on each one of these asset actions automatically. In this case, I'm just gonna do a very simple swap. I'm gonna go ahead and save that asset action. I'm gonna go ahead and choose the swapped CI. This is a list of assets that are in stock and available. I'm just gonna go ahead and choose one at random and go ahead and save that record. So once I close the incident, what's gonna happen behind the scenes is that the old asset will be retired and the new asset will be placed into active service, automatically assigned to that user, and then all the information that was on the old asset record would get pushed to the new asset record, saving a lot of time and maintaining data accuracy. The final question we're gonna tackle is, what is the lift like to implement HAM Pro, or what is the best way to implement HAM? Is there a recommended standard? Does it make more sense to start fresh from HAM Pro or to do a migration from ITSM HAM? And it really depends on where you're at in your journey. If you're just starting, but you think HAM Pro is the way to go, you can certainly start there and take a measured and incremental approach. If you already have HAM Basic in place, you can upgrade, but just be aware that there may be some data issues you're gonna to wanna to address along the way, specifically around hardware models. So whatever way that you're considering implementing, here's some other pro tips to keep in mind. If you know for sure that you're gonna implement HAM Pro, you just may wanna go ahead and start there. There's less data conversion and less data scrubbing challenges as a result. You can migrate from ITSM HAM to HAM Pro, but treat it like an upgrade project. There'll be some activities related to data conversion that you're gonna to wanna to take into account. It's also very important to incorporate the hardware discovery process into your overall process. This will save you time and improve your data quality. And then last and certainly not least, very important, gain executive sponsorship and take a process-centric or a process-based approach. Start with a good set of processes, then configure the platform accordingly. InfoCenter is passionate about the platform and is solely focused on helping customers plan with Radius and implement and support ServiceNow across the entire platform through our DevShop Managed Services offering. InfoCenter's team of certified experts and practitioners provide deep expertise across the enterprise within IT, HR, customer service, operations, and security and risk through all industry verticals. Please visit us at infocenter.io to learn more about our unique offerings and customer success stories.